But in the previous video, uh, we have established what is going to happen to the quantity of good x, uh, equilibrium quantity, so optimal quantity of good x, when budget is changed. Right? Now, we're going to see what is going to happen to optimal choices of customers. So how much good X and good Y does the customer buy uh, if price of good X is going up. So what we are now considering is a situation where budget as well as price of, of good Y are remaining constant and at the same time the only thing that changes is the price of good X, right? And look, right away we see that we can get rid out of some elements in the system uh, we were using. So this is going to be zero, this is going to be zero, and this is going to be zero. So look, we are just left with two elements, right? Now, yeah. because each of these uh, because each of these expressions uh, is a product of something with dpx and dpx is different than zero, that would be a good idea to divide both sides of the system by dpx. Okay? And by doing so, of course, yeah. of course here we will be able to get comparative static derivatives. With respect to change, with respect to uh, price of good X, but of course the derivative that interests us the most is derivative of the quantity of good X with respect to price of good X. Okay, so this is the one we're going to focus our attention on. Okay, and look, what is left here now? are just those two expressions and zero, right? So this is the system that we need to solve and of course we are looking for comparative static derivative of optimum quantity of good x with respect to price of good x and in order to get it we replace the second column uh, of the matrix over here with vector of exogenous terms okay and those are for us now x, lambda and zero and we've got py ux y, u, y, y okay we're going to deal with this issue uh, with this determinant, and of course we divide by an edge, right? But we already deal with this determinant using Laplace expansion. We're going to expand with respect to this row because this actually leads us to a very nice alley. And look, what we're getting here is we're going to have a minus right in front x. Okay, this is going to be divided by the Hessian, right? And then we delete first row, second column, and we are left with the expression negative px, negative p y. Uh, uh, u x y, u y y. Okay, and then we this one comes with positive sign. We're gonna get lambda here and uh, divide it by. The Hessian, and now if we get rid of the lambda, uh, if we now use Laplace expansion here, we're, we're going to get zero negative py negative py u y. Okay, and look, we're going to be working with those two expressions because, as it turns out, they have very specific economic interpretations. This part we're going to call term one and this part we're going to call term two and let's notice that term two is uh, simply if we would 
calculate it out, we would get that this is negative lambda times price of root y squared over the border condition. Okay. However, still, let's see. Uh, let's see what we've got in our answer. And let's start with term one. Well, this term one already has something that we have seen. Because look, term one could be rewritten, uh, it could be rewritten as uh, as x um, as x or maybe minus x times uh, negative x times 1 over h times a negative px negative py u x y u y and look this part this part of the term is something that we saw in the last video. That was the partial derivative of quantity of good x with respect to budget, right? So this was telling us what is going to happen to the quantity purchase of good x if the customer budget increases by one dollar. Uh, and look, we already said that we cannot establish the sign of this expression uh, beforehand, and this makes perfect sense because depending whether the good is luxury or normal, or on the other hand it's going to be a defense good or inferior good, we would expect different reaction from the customer due to cheap, due to increase uh, in the level of the customer's income. So look, this is giving us a very interesting point. Now, we get a derivative of x with respect to change in budget when we calculate derivative with respect to change in price. Now, why is this happening? Look, we kind of stumbled upon it a little bit earlier, but let's put it directly on the table. If price of one good changes, it changes the possibility of your purchases. You're, it's like your income is shrinking because now, in real terms, in quantities of good X and Y that you can purchase uh, are simply lower. And look, we do not see it every day because prices are changing usually very slightly, right? However, if we would see that a portion of our uh, a portion of our income that is relatively big, for example, a portion that we spend on our rent and our rent doubles. If, for example, we were spending 80%, 40% of our income on the rent, and the rent doubles, well, we see we are in a very big problem because now we have only 20% of our income remaining in order to purchase other things. However, in this situation, we clearly see that this, uh, that, that when prices are changing, it impacts our income. So this means that even though in this case, we have a price change, we have also an income effect. We could say there is an income effect of a price change. And look, when we look at this expression over here, I can, uh, I can rewrite it right away, right? This, uh, this would be negative uh, x right times uh, times derivative of x with respect to b okay as it turns out now this expression is telling us quite a lot about what I 
just this way. Look, this part measures what is the, the amount of the good X that the customer purchased, right? So the bigger the value of it is, the more the customers buy, and the bigger the share of the income that the customer spend, spends on this good. And now look, what we have over here is derivative of budget with respect to income, right? So this one is, is the derivative of a quantity of good X purchase with respect to income, which tells us what will be the reaction of the customer. So will the customer buy more of these goods or less of these goods? However, the scale will be decided by the absolute value uh, of the expression up front, or just simply the quantity of good x. Okay, now let's notice one uh, one more thing. Look, if we would get and make our customer compensated for his uh, or health loss in income, how would we do? Look, we can simply pay some additional money of the exact amount that the customer uh, that the customer has lost, right? And look, out of this, we can calculate the negative x, right, is equal to dB d px, right? Now look, what does it mean? This is the impact of change in price of good X on the customer's budget, right? And we see that this impact is negative and the size of this impact is proportional to the quantity, the optimal quantity purchased. So look, I can rewrite this expression now even further as Look, now we see how this channel works. Change in price of good X influences our budget, and then budget has an impact on the quantity purchase of good X. This is what we would call an uh, income effect. of a price change. Okay. Now, we can carry a little bit more uh, with what we have with this assumption over here. Look, imagine now that what is happening is that the customer is being compensated for the loss of income due, due to change in price of good tax, right? And like, it turns out that in this situation, what we can do is go back to our original system and solve it a little bit different. Okay, so look. Uh, the system initially looked negative dB. Uh, then we had uh, okay, negative dB. Then, uh, uh, then we had x p dPx plus y D, P, Y. Right? Now, uh, over here we had X, I'm sorry, lambda D, P, X and lambda D, P, Y. So, look, what we're going to do now is to solve this system a 
under a little bit different assumption. Look, we're going to assume that dB is equal to negative x dPx. So the customer is compensated for the loss of income due to increase in price of good x. And at the same time, we see that the uh, price of the y remains constant, right? So again, this is gone, this is gone. Now, we are assuming that customer is fully compensated for the loss of income due to, uh, due to uh, increase in the price of the x. So, this is gone as well. Now, when we divide both sides of the system by dpx, we get a simpler system like this. And look, now using now using this system, we can solve for again for a comparative static derivative like this however in a specific case we're going to call it compensated compensated which means that the customer was compensated for the loss of income due to increasing price line okay so what we're going to have over here oh, we're going to have zero negative dx negative dy we take, uh, uh, we take the vector of constants, we place it in the second column, so we have zero, lambda, zero, and we have negative py, u, x, y, u, y, y. Okay, now, of course, divided by border addition. If I'm gonna use Laplace expansion, what I'm going to get is lambda over h times 0, negative y, negative y, u, y, y. Or, in other words, I just calculated t2. Okay, so what would be the interpretation of this. Look, we see that in this circumstance, the customer is co fully compensated for the loss of income due to increase in price of good X. However, still customer makes some changes. And look, we have a situation where we are interested in the impact of price of good X incre increasing the price of good X on the quantity purchase of good X while at the same time keeping the customer's budget intact. So look, what we can see over here is that this comparative static derivative would measure how the customer is choosing between x and y due to increase in price of good x. Look, what should we expect over here? We should expect, of course, a fall. A fall? Well, definitely a fall, because when something gets more expensive, customer usually tries not to buy as much, right? And customer may try to choose to substitute this good with some other good. And this is the effect we have. If the customer income wouldn't change, how the customer's choice would. So to which degree would the customer actually uh, substitute, uh, substitute good X with good Y? Right? And look, again, this expression here is negative lambda over h times p y. 
square. Price is positive, square positive. Our hash yield is definitely positive. Lambda is the uh, marginal value of money is positive. We have minus the prime. We can be sure that it is negative. And this effect, so substitution of one good with the other is called substitution effect of a price change. And look, this brings us to a bigger point. We see that increase in the price of good X will always have two effects. First, when the price of good X is increased, right, it changes the customer's budget, right? We written this as change in customer's budget, change in customer's budget due to change in price of good X, right? And this change in customer's budget then can impact on the quantity purchased of good X. This part of the uh, change in the amount of good X consumed due to increase in price level is simply called income effect. The second part is what would be a pure, uh, what would be a pure substitution, a pure decision about substitution between the two goods if the customer's budget would be remaining changed. So we've written it as compensated, and it measures substitution. budget here 
is divided by a bigger number, right? And it makes perfect sense. If this is the maximum of x we can buy, if it happens to be that, if it happens to be that uh, the customer spends all the money just on a good x, this is the amount the customer will be able to buy. Now, when p is going up, you can buy less good x, of course. So, what happens is the budget constraint changes its slope, right? It rotates clockwise around this one, right? Means that P X T. Okay, and look, now if we want to see what's going to happen to customer, you know what, in order for us to be able to see properly, let's make this uh, change, this price change, it's very, very profound. And this is when we're going to see the effect very well. Okay. Okay. So, of course, where are we going to be at the end? We would have to take this indifference curve and move it downward until we would get to a point where the new budget line would be tangent to the highest line in the first curve. However, we're going to do things slightly different. Okay, look, let's just say that the customer would be on exactly the same utility curve, so indifference curve. One, uh, however, the price ratio would be different. Okay, and look, if this would be the case, we would get, well, what we would need to do to, to check this situation would be to ch ch take this line Move it, move it upwards and see at what point it would be tangent to indifference curve. And look, what we would see is this as a result of increasing price of good X, the customer would now buy more of good X, and I'm sorry, more of good Y, and less of good X, right? The customer would just simply be substituting good that became more expensive with the good that became relatively cheaper, right? However, of course, we know that at the end, we need to simply end up somewhere over here, right? And look, in our case, we see that customer, uh, and that the customer, and we clearly see that that was a very big shock to customer's budget. We see the customer is needs to now to get to new equilibrium decrease the possession of good X even further, uh, let's call it income, and possession of good Y even before the level the customer had at the very beginning. Right? And by power, it makes perfect sense. Look, due to income effect, Customer just substituted good Y that became relatively more cheap with good uh, and, and, I'm sorry, good X that became relatively more expensive with good Y that became relatively more cheap. However, income effect, income effect was negative on both goods, so we can assume they are both good, uh, and they are both normal or luxury, because the customer is with the declining income customer is declining possession of both goods. And as you can see, in case of good Y, the income effect is actually stronger than the substitution effect. This happens when the price change uh, is relatively big or the good already taking a big place in customer's watch. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, this is it about the
customer's uh, choice model. Next, we're going to get to the producer model. Hope to see you in the next video. Take care.